the make believe world of cinema in today's time has numerous production houses not very long ago there were no motion pictures but only paintings and still photos the marvel of cinema came to india on a rainy day in july a mere 4 years short of the new century but with the turn of century various pioneers started making motion pictures in india and eventually dada saheb phalke won the race by making india's first feature film raja harish chandra in 1913 today in our not to be forgotten series we bring the story of dada saheb phalke's perseverance and his style of film making which made him father of indian cinema Dundiraj Govind Phalke popularly known as Dada Saheb Phalke was born on 30th April 1870 in Trimbak British India now in Maharashtra He was son of a Sanskrit scholar His family moved to Bombay when his father Daji Shastri was appointed as professor of Sanskrit at Wilson College Phalke graduated from the Sir J J School of Art and did a course in oil and watercolor painting from Kala Bhavan in Baroda Soon he achieved proficiency in architecture and modeling and won a gold medal for creating a model of an ideal theater at the 1892 industrial exhibition of Ahmedabad. Falke was man of many talents and these institutions trained him to master watercolor, oil painting, half tone, block and photo litho painting. In the early stages of his career, he started Falke engraving photo printing business. However, turning professional photographer in those days did not bring much success, owing largely to the misconception that being photographed would suck the energy out of a person and lead to bad consequences. He then moved to painting stage curtains for drama companies which gave him basic training in drama production and acting. He picked up magic tricks from a German magician who was touring Baroda at the time. By the end of 1901 Falke began to conduct magic performances using the name Professor Kalfa a combination of the letters of his last name For a brief period he worked at the Archaeological Survey of India in 1903 however resigned due to swadeshi movement He then set up a printing press in Lonavala with R G Bhandarkar as partner Falke quit the business due to differences with Seth Purushottam Visharam Mavji going never to return to printing profession having dabbled various art forms in his career and already in his 40s his entry to the films a momentary love affair when he watched a motion film the life of christ at the america india pictures palace at sandhurst road in bombay this was not that he was watching this new art form for the first time but this time the impact was different It sparked within Falke the desire to make a story film on the Hindu deities like Rama and Krishna. It seemed as if his entire life to date had been a mere preparation for what he was to do in life. It gave direction to the new art where he could culminate all his learning like drama, photography, costumes, music, dance storytelling and create the magic by tricking visuals. He devoted an entire year to learning the craft of motion film and movie making equipments. He burned the midnight oil watching films, buying a small film camera reels and projecting the images on a wall. Sleep deprived, eyesight ravaged, he struggled to accumulate the finances to go to London to acquire technical knowledge of film making. Mortgaging his insurance policies, he managed to secure rupees ten thousand and left for London in February nineteen twelve. The editor of Bioscope Cine Weekly introduced him to filmmaker Cecil Hepworth of Walton Studios. He thus gained entry into the studio's various departments. Few weeks later, he set off on the journey back, bearing. The Williamson camera he had bought for fifty pounds, and having placed an order for Kodak RAW film and a perforator, and hence the Falke Films Company was founded on first April nineteen twelve. To start, he made short films to help him prove his filmmaking techniques as well as to attract financiers. Soon, he garnered the support of Yashwant Rao Nadkarni and Narayan Rao Devhare, and they offered Falke a loan. He penned the script of a film based on the legends of Raja Harish Chandra 
कास्टिंग दत्ता राय दामोदर दाबके एस किंग हरीश चंद्रा अन्ना सालुन के ए यंग मेल एक्टर एस क्वीन तारामती एंड हिज ओन सन भालचंद्रा एस द प्रिंस रोहित शिवा ही हिमसेल्फ वुड हैंडल द स्क्रिप्ट डायरेक्शन प्रोडक्शन डिजाइन मेकअप एडिटिंग एंड फिल्म प्रोसेसिंग ओवर द सिक्स मंथ्स टू शूट अराउंड फोर रील्स Raja Harish Chandra premiered at Bombay's Olympia Theatre on 21st April 1913 releasing on 3rd May 1913 at the Coronation Cinema Girgaon Bombay a commercial success it was acknowledged as India's first full length feature film Relocating to Nashik Falke worked on Mohini Basmasur on the mythological story of Mohini the female avatar of the Hindu god Vishnu and the basmasura and asura or demon when a traveling drama company chitakarshak natak company visited nashik falke managed to convince its proprietor raghunath rao gokhale to allow two of their actresses to act in the film thus did durga bhai kamat cast as parvati and her daughter kamla bhai gokhale as mohini became the first women to act in the indian cinema Released on 2nd January 1914 at the Olympia Theatre Bombay the film was well received as was Falke's next Satyavan Savitri which released on 6th June 1914 A hat trick of hits enabled Falke to clear his debts as well as visit London again to buy electronic machinery worth rupees 30000 Impressed by his three films which he carried to London various studios wished to hire Falke to produce films in England on indian theme but being an enthusiastic supporter of swadeshi movement refused these tempting offers and set sail for india however trouble awaited with world war 1 looming and his investor cutting funds for his studio struggling to collect capital for his next raja shrial he undertook a tour of princely states collecting the amounts from various heads of kingdoms as payments for his shows Remaking Raja Harish Chandra as Satyavadi Raja Harish Chandra after its negative went missing he also made a documentary how movies are made demonstrating the process of film making to potential investors helped by an appeal made by Lokmanya Tilak Falke accumulated the capital to start filming Lanka Dahan released in September 1917 it portrayed the burning of Lanka in the episode from the Ramayana a roaring success with anna salamke playing both rama as well as his wife sita in the first double role in indian cinema it lifted falke out of the quagmire of debt approached by various businessmen desiring a partnership falke eventually accepted the proposal of five bombay based textile industrialist thus was the falke films company converted into the hindustan cinema films company on 1st January 1918 with Falke as a working partner the studios Shri Krishna Janma with Falke's 6 year old daughter Mandakini playing the lead role of Krishna released on 1918 went on to become commercially successful Falke's next film Kaliya Mardan depicting the killing of the poisonous serpent Kaliya by Lord Krishna released on 1919 and also met with commercial success running for 10 months increasing and irresolvable differences with the partners of Hindustan Cinema Films Company eventually saw Falke quit and announce his retirement to depart with his family for Kashi watching several hindi plays in kashi by the Kirloskar Natak Mandali and interacting with the traveling theater company's officials Falke went on to write a marathi language play Rangabhoomi he staged the satire on stage conditions of its time at Baliwala Theatre Bombay in 1922 eventually after resisting several offers to rejoin the film industry falke accepted an offer from the struggling hindustan cinema films company to join as a production chief and technical advisor he went on to direct sant namdev which released on 1922 followed by other films however after a series of hiccups Falke finally resigned from the job. 
setting up a new company falke diamond company he acquired capital from maya shankar bhat a former partner of the hindustan cinema films company to start filming setu bandhan the film was stalled after funds ran out during filming leading to woman apte of hindustan cinema films company offering to bail him out however by the time falke's silent film was ready for release the world had changed talkies were the new rage setu bandhan released in 1932 and was released again in 1934 with the addition of sound however even sound did not help the film's fortunes falke went on to direct his only sound film ganga avataran for the film company kolapur cinetone belonging to maharaja rajaram 3 of kolapur completed in 2 years at the cost of rupees 250000 the film released on 6th august 1937 at the royal opera house bombay extremely conscious of the revolutionary change he was ushering into the indian cultural sphere he made efforts to link his cinema practice with the swadeshi movement his advancing years saw falke withdraw from films altogether Retiring to Nashik Dada Saheb Phalke passed away on 16th February 1944 at the age of 74 it was the end of an era the government of india instituted the dada saheb phalke award awarded for lifetime contribution to cinema named in his honor and also released a postage stamp in his name phalke's innovative and enterprising spirit not only set the ball rolling for what would become the world's largest film industry but also his films are credited with being a major influence on the frontal framing that would dominate indian cinema it left its mark on key aspects of film aesthetics particularly the mythological genre he remains unforgettable for his devotion to film making against all odds and cinemazi pays its tribute to the enormous contribution to indian cinema